presenting an unusual story of love and mystery on Front Page Detective. Starring Mr. Edmund Lowe as the famed newspaper columnist and amateur detective David Chase. And now for another thrilling adventure as we accompany David Chase and watch him match wits with those who would take the law into their own hands. dead man, a cryptic message, an assortment of gunfire, and the orange dog. You can call those your headlines, Lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, Chase, but cut out the newspaper lingo, will you? I know some of the details, but give me the rest of them. I got to make out a complete report. From the beginning? From the beginning. Well, it all started with a phone call early this evening from an old girlfriend of mine. David Chase speaking. Hello. David? This is Shelley Martin. Remember me? Sure, I do, Shelley. Well, well, how are you? What brings you to this man's town? David, I just got into town. And a jam. I need help. Would you... Well, uh... Yeah, sure. Uh, where are you? I'm at 84 West 67th Street. Hurry. And bring your brains along. You'll need them. I'll be there right away, Shelley. Oh, David. Thank you, Evan, dear. Yeah. How have you been? Come on in. I'll tell you what I can about this jam I'm in. Shelley, dear, you're nervous. Don't be nervous. Tell me all about it. It's about a girlfriend of mine, Marion. She's involved with a man named Blue Horner, a Chicago broker. Now, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, Shelley. Uh... I thought you were in a jam. Oh, brother, I am. Well, to begin with, when I arrived from Chicago today, my girlfriend called me and asked me to meet her here. When I got here, the, uh, the lights were burning, the radio was playing, the front door was wide open, but the place was deserted. Whose house is this, Hornet? No, I think she said it belongs to a friend of his who's in Europe now. This Horner person uses it when he's in town. Well... Where's the nasty jam? Right behind the sofa. Yike. I see what you mean. Who is he? How'd he get there? Maybe it's Horner. I don't know. Maybe he just got tired carrying that letter around his chest. I tried to search him, but I couldn't. Well, wouldn't have done any good. Whoever shot him, cleaned him out. There's no papers, wallets, nothing. I found this magazine. It was lying under his head. Look, he must have written this message on his cover just before he died. You know what's, what's this? Call Marion tonight about the orange dog of who? Do you know anything about this? That's why I called you, David. Look, Marion is my girlfriend's name. And whatever this orange dog of foo is, it must be awfully important. We gotta find out what it means, for Marion's sake. Well, right now it means murder, honey. That's for the cops. No, I did. Call him. But you can keep Marion's name out of it, can't you? Okay. For old time's sake, it's a deal. This makes just about as much sense as that orange dog of foo. No more. Oh, thanks, David. <laughs> now, what are we going to do? Well, first I'm going to call a friend of mine, Lieutenant Andrews, and have him come over here and pick up a body probably known as Lou Horner. And uh, I'm going to leave out all reference to you, Marion, and the orange dog of Pooh. Tell him what shall I do? Where are you staying? I checked in at the Jackson apartment, 62nd Avenue. I didn't even have time to unpack when I got Marion's phone call. I see. I'll tell you what you do. You go over to your hotel and wait there until I get in touch with you. When will that be? As soon as I get a little information about a certain Chinese canine known as Fu. Well, all right, David, but... But yeah, don't David. stay too long. No, I'll only be about a couple of hours. I should be there by then, dear. Now, you go ahead. How oh, well, David. Now, wait for me. Don't be nervous now. And I appreciate what you... I thought I saw... Doc! Careful, David! There he goes. 
He used his best shots, and then he... Who was it? I don't know. I only saw the muzzle of a gun pointing in our direction. I'm scared. Yeah, baby. But you're in this thing up to your pretty little neck. <laughs> Being scared won't do any good, honey. Yeah, I'm in it, too. Now, look, Shelley. He won't be back. Now, that's a cinch. You go back to your hotel. Don't show yourself. Wait there till you hear from me or I get there. Understand? Anything you say, David. And I hope your girlfriend Marion is worth getting shot at. Oh, David. Now, darling, look. Don't be nervous. Take it easy now. Chin up. Then I figured that it was time for a conference with a friend of mine who was more familiar with things having oriental names than I. A veritable walking encyclopedia named Jimmy Tang, dealer in oriental curios in Chinatown. I am honored. To be able to help my friend brings the fragrance of plum blossoms to my nostrils, a carpet of rose petals upon my floor, and a thousand blessings upon my humble head. Oh, thank you, Tang. Thank you very much. Now, tell me, uh, what is the orange dog of Fu? The dog of Fu? Mm-hmm. Why, um... Uh, this fantastic creature is called the dog of Fu. Its fierce eyes and snarling mouth are to frighten away the evil spirits from the temples of Buddha. Well, why did you say, uh, called the dog of Fu? Amateur collectors and auctioneers have called him that. It sounds exotic to the cash customer. Actually, he is a lion. The lion of Korea. Oh, I see. Uh, tell me, uh, Tang, do you happen to have an orange dog of Fu? It's strange that you should ask me that. Why strange? Because, reason number one, there is no orange dog of Fu. No, why not? Because to the Buddhist, orange is the color of sorrow. Hence, the peace of which you speak could not possibly be authentic. Mm-hmm. Well, what's reason number two? You are the second person to have inquired after this non-existent orange dog of Fu within the past few minutes. What? Who was it? Was it, uh, was it an ugly little man with long hair? Oh, on the contrary, a very pretty girl with quite short hair. Was her name Marion? <laughs> she made a point of not leaving her name. Mm -hmm. well, that even proves something. True. But, Mr. Chase, there is an old Chinese proverb, loosely translated, which says, A little knowledge is the instrument of a fool. <laughs> yeah, there's an old American proverb that says one screwy thing leads to another. Good night, Tank. Thanks very much. Rio shops in the neighborhood, so I started to make the rounds. From the first three, I drew a blank. And then I came upon a glossy, well-ordered place called Saxon. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, have you ever heard of the orange dog of Fu? The orange dog of Fu? Mm-hmm. Yes, I've heard of such a piece, I think. Porcelain. Probably, but that's your business. Uh, who has it, Mr. Saxon? Could you tell me? No, I'm sorry. I believe I heard this orange dog mentioned just once in the village. I... Don't remember where or by whom. Mm hmm Then you have no idea of its value, huh? Now that you mention it, I... I seem to remember the figure. Twenty thousand. Look, you know that it's not that valuable, Mr. Saxon. It's not authentic. Not authentic? No. You seem to know a good deal more than I about this orange dog. Possibly one must see it to appreciate its value. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, uh, has a girl been in here lately asking about this orange dog? A girl? Uh, why, no. Yeah. There you are. Thank you. Do you happen to know anyone uh, by the name of Marion? Marion? Mm -hmm. Marion. No. Why do you ask? Because Marion has quite an interest in the orange dog. I feel that they would make a great team if we could ever get them together. I see. And, uh, what is your name, sir? Well, I'm not Fu Manchu. 
night. Good night. And it did a backus to figure out that Saxon knew more than he told me. All right, Mr. Wise Guy, reach. Now, come on, you and me are going to have a little talk. Get over there in the dark. What's the matter? Don't you feel at home in the light? Incidentally, haven't I seen you somewhere before? No. A horror movie, maybe. Shut up. I don't like you anyway, so cut out the smart stuff. Oh, come on. Put your hands up against the wall. Now, Mr. Wise Guy, did you find what you're looking for? Oh, so that's it, huh? If you mean the orange dog, the answer is no. The orange dog. So that's where the plates are. Plates? What plates? Mrs. Murphy's dinner plates, of course. <laughs> so you work for Horner and you don't know what plates? Horner? Look, chum, the next time you get a haircut, have your brains dusted off. Nobody works for Horner anymore. He's dead. Horner dead? Since when? Come on, talk. The body was on 67th Street. Maybe you knocked him off. Ah, uh, you stupid. That body wasn't Horner. Horner is twice the age of that stiff on 67th Street. Now, come out, tell me what Horner's got on his mind. You know, all right, I saw you taking orders from his girl. Oh, so you were the peeping Tom. Horner's girl? You mean Shelley Martin? Sure, I mean Shelley Martin. Who else? Now, don't tell me you didn't know. You sure you don't mean Marion? Marion? Who's Marion? Shelley Martin's girlfriend. So it seems like you're a mixed-up character. In fact, Mr. Wise Guy, you're so mixed up, you're no good to me at all. So stay here with the rest of the garbage. Meddler. I decided to go hunting. But first I'd call you and get that part off my conscience. Hello. Hello, Andrews. Yeah? This is David Chase. Oh, yeah? Well, we're wrapping things up down here. I've got news for you. That body isn't Horner. Of course it isn't Horner. And Horner wasn't a broker. He was a counterfeiter. And the dead man here is the treasury agent named Slade, who was closing in on Horner. So have you got anything on your chest that you haven't told us, Chase? You better get it off your chest. A girl named Shelley Martin is calling the signal. What do you mean? There's a certain dame in the middle of all this mess, and she's getting yours truly in the middle of it with her. Where is she? Right now, she's at the Jackson Apartments. And if you hurry, you can meet me there. Now, listen, Lou Horner. We're going to get a few things cleared up. I told you to stay in Chicago until I sent for you. All right. So I'm not in Chicago where I belong. I'm here. Is there anything wrong with that, Mr. Horner? Yes, everything. I wouldn't even know when you were in town if I hadn't gone to 67th Street, where I saw you and some man having delightful little chit-chat over the body of that tea man. Did you say a tea man? Is that who he was? Then you killed him, Lou. Of course I did. I had to. Now stop asking questions. This is business, not pleasure. If you're talking about Marion, I know about her, too. Marion? Yeah. I don't know enough, but what I do know, I don't like. Now tell me, Lou, who is Marion and what does she mean to you? Marion means money to me. Nothing more. Now leave me alone so I can make a call according to schedule. A call about what? No. Shelley, it's me, Chase. What happened? Come on, open up. Somebody shot Luke through that window. It's done. Did you see who did it? With Peel. Somebody in long hair and dirty clothes, huh? Yeah. I met him in Horner's office once. Lou said he was a broker. Yeah, Lou would say that. Huh? What do you mean? I just found out that both Peel and Horner are counterfeiters. And that you, baby, are... Lou, a counterfeiter? That's right, baby. 
Oh, never mind the arched eyebrows. They mean nothing. But I swear I never knew Honor was anything but a broker. A broker who was maltreating your poor little girlfriend, Marion. Shelley, you're a liar. All right, about Marion, yes. But from there on out, I'm telling you the truth, David. Well, come on, let's have some more of it fast. All right. Here it is. Lujan has been my boyfriend. And checkbook, hmm? And checkbook for the past year and a half. The last month, he suddenly stopped being attentive. I didn't know why. So you decided to keep your great big blue eyes wide open. Exactly. And it paid off because I found out that one, he'd drawn better than $20,000 out of his bank account. Two, that he was coming here to the city. And three, three that a little item called Marion might be beating your time, huh? Yeah. And that part of it upset me plenty. Till ten minutes ago. And I found out that Lou there was a murderer. That I don't buy. Three cheers for the all-American girl. Skip it, David. It's been six years. I'll live my way. You live yours. Oh, don't worry. Nobody would want to change places with any... What's this on, on Horner's little finger? Looks like a rubber band. It is. He had a memory like an elephant. A dead one. He used every kind of gadget in the books to keep himself from forgetting things. Especially numbers. That little rubber band probably means 10 o'clock. How does that figure? Well, like five and five, the fingers of both hands together. Reading from left to right. You get it? Oh, yeah, but it sounds screwy. Say, wait a minute. Horner was just about to put in a phone call to Marion. And the team man left this message. Call Marion tonight about the orange dog of Foo. Uh-huh. Call Ma Rion. Call me. Hey, wait a minute. I think I've got the answer. I've got to work fast, Shelley, baby. What answer are you talking about? The only answer that counts. A line on your ex-girlfriend, Marion. This is Mr. Saxon. Oh, uh, Mr. Saxon, this is, uh, this is Lou Horner. Uh, I'm sorry about my call being 15 minutes late, but uh, I'd still like to talk to you about that orange dog of food. Yes, Mr. Horla. The orange dog is here waiting for you. Thank you. I'll be right over. Mr. Horla, who called? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't call you at 10 o'clock on schedule, Mr. Saxon. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you. And that's quite all right, Mr. Horla. Anything wrong? You seem a bit on edge. <clears throat> no, uh, of course not. So please, Horla, don't make a single stupid move. Oh, now look. I'm not going to bite the orange dog. You won't even touch the orange dog. Now, who are you? Oh, we've been through all that. I'm Horner, Lou Horner from Chicago. No, you're not. Horner would have no reason to wander around curio shops looking for the orange dog. Once more, who are you? And where is the real Lou Horner? All right, we'll take it in just that order. I'm David Chase, a newspaper man. Lou Horner's a corpse, but also I'm a good friend of yours because I'm going to give you some advice free. Now forget the whole thing, Buster, you lick. What are you talking about? A T for Treasury man named Slade. Before he died, he left enough evidence to put you away until orange dogs are as popular as lifesavers. Now, what do you say, Mr. Saxon? Do we play it smart? Very well, Chase. We'll play it smart. My kind of smart. Put up your hands. Turn around. Newspaper man. Go back to that counter. I want to show you something. The orange dog, perhaps, huh? Go on. Yes. 
The orange dog of Fu. I wanted you to see it for yourself before you die. Here it is, Chase. Yeah. And now that you have seen the orange dog of Fu for the first time, and the last, what do you think of it? He thinks it's just Jim Dandy, mister. Now drop your gun before I blow the top of your head off. Go on, drop it. That's better. Now lay down there and stay put. Now, you, Mr. Wise Guy. Thanks for showing up, Phil. Before our friend here ran out of small jokes. Oh, kid yourself. I didn't just show up. I've been right behind you all the way. That's how I work. Like a merry-go-round, huh? You chase me while I chase you. Yeah, and it pays off, too. Tell me, Peel, who runs first? Nobody. At least not until I get my hands on a couple of very fine and great plates that I've been after for six months now. Plates? And the orange dog, huh? Nowhere else but. Or maybe you thought the late Mr. Horner wanted it as an ornament, huh? But that's all it is. Stand back. There are no plates in the orange dog. It's just a collector's item. And you're just a liar and I can prove it. Pick that thing up and smash it against the counter. No, no, please. There are no plates in the dog. Believe me. Shut up. Smash it. Against the counter. Here. Here, Peel. Here are the plates in this box. Where? Here. What are you doing with that paper? In that crate? Trying to start a bonfire? Not with this paper. This is a sample of the finest quality counterfeiting paper, Chase. And that's what Horner wanted to buy, not plates. Those he got a month ago. That makes you a bigger crook than ever. You're not going to tell anybody. Maybe I will. What are you going to do about it? Kill you right now. I don't believe you can. I don't believe you can shoot straight without your glasses on. Your boys came in. You know the rest. Yeah. Those team men sure went wild over those thousands of sheets of A1 counterfeiting paper down in the basement. <laughs> Peel admits the murder of Horner, and our friend Saxon is now on his way downtown. Under protest, of course. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, how about my friend here? Oh. She's only guilty of withholding information from the police. But then you are, too. Huh? What do you mean? Yeah. But... We won't hold you. We won't hold you either. Thanks, officer. A million. Well, now, honey, that all this deal is washed up, how about the... Hey, wait a minute, Chase. Before you resume your... Yeah, I want to know one thing. What's that? How did you ever figure out Saxon's phone number from the message that T-man wrote? Well, you see, Marion isn't a person. What? No, it was Clay Saxon's telephone number. Well, you told me that Horner was fuzzy about remembering numbers, and uh, he used all kinds of tricks. Yeah. Look, I'll show you something. When I unfolded this note, I got a break. The crease in the paper runs down between the A and the R in Marion. Yeah. So I read call M-A-R-I-O-N. M-A, Madison, R-I-O-N on the phone dial of 7466. 
Madison, 7466. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Chase, you're a pretty smart cookie. <laughs> well, thanks. Don't let it go to your head, Paul. No, I won't. Uh, here, how about, uh... How about, uh... What? Well, a clever fellow like me ought to figure out something. <laughs> <laughs> For another exciting mystery, read Front Page Detective magazine. And tune in next week, same time, same station, for another thrilling episode of Front Page Detective on television. You're invited to be with David Chase as he again unravels a case of mystery and intrigue on Front Page Detective.